That's disgusting. That's why I asked. Who's driving? It's over nine. What? Trap car. Addition. Use the boots to get it. No, no, no. Huh? What the f***? Hello again everyone, this is Bionic Slime. I am your online voice for reviews of your choice, and this is BS Reviews. Today we take a look at a very popular anime series. It spawned two sequels, has many many people who support and love this show. I've heard a lot of great things about it. The most interesting being that this is an anime that is a mixture of comedic high school romance as well as science fiction mecha. Talk about the series Full Metal Panic. It was originally created by Shoji Gato. It was brought over and dubbed by ADV Films. The anime was directed by Kochi Chigura, who directed such anime as Gatekeepers and the highly acclaimed Last Exile. The artwork was done by Masaru Ota, who's done art for such anime as Real Bout High School and the Big O TV series. It stars the vocal talents of Chris Patton as Sosuke Sagara, Lucy Christensen as Kaname Chittery, Allison Keith as Melissa Mao, Hilary Hag as Teletha Testarossa, Mike McRae as Garin, Monica Riel as Kyoko Tokiwa, and Vic Mignaglia as Kurtz Weber. The plot of Full Metal Panic. Full Metal Panic focuses on a mysterious, super-secret military organization known as Mithril, who have been assigned to protect the Whispered. What are the Whispered? They're p ordinary people who have not-so-ordinary abilities, mostly ranged in psychic, telepathic, telekinesis, and some kind of mental connection to the robots, or Gundams, or Mechas, whatever you want to call them, that the Mithril organization uses to battle against terrorist organizations and terrorists like the villain Garin, who wants his hands on the latest Whispered, Kaname Chittery, a girl in high school. To protect her, Mithril assigns Sosuke Sagara, Melissa Mao, and Kurtz Weber to protect her. In order to do that, Sosuke must infiltrate Kanami's high school and pose as a student. Unfortunately, his stick-up-the-ass strict military background makes it difficult for him to be sociable. This causes a lot of amusing and complicated problems to erupt when Sasuke erupts very commando-like to the smallest problems, including the biggest ones, causing a lot of friction and head trauma from Konami Chittery. Review of the plot. I have to say the whole notion of putting a more human and teenage face on the whole mecha science fiction series is a really good selling point, because I have to admit, I've never found characters in mech anime, such as Gundam Wing or stuff like that, to be that interesting. I've always found the characters to be very stiff, very bland, and very emotionless. Now, you're more than welcome to disagree with me. That's just my opinion. And I've never been really a big fan of all the military technological jargon talk that usually suffocates uh, mecha anime. At least I think so. So I was really hopeful to see how this one would turn out. The the whole notion of this these teenagers being put together, it's kind of like an odd couple setup because half the humor, or pretty much all the humor, depends on Sagara's interaction with Konami, and it is pretty friggin' hilarious. I mean, he never really lightens up. He's completely rock-solid robot stick-up-the-ass military man who responds with firearms to simple things like internet viruses or even just the slightest misconception. And It's very funny and very amusing, and it makes the interaction between the characters much more complicated because it also can develop romance but also friction. So you got a lot of no nice you know, emotional integrations going around here. The biggest problem, though, with Full Metal Panic that unfortunately reared its ugly ass head is the military techno babble jargon, which I think is really unnecessary because you have such great planting material with these characters. I mean, there's so much mechanical talk and jargon that I honestly just felt like just wanted them to shut up about it. Like, there's this one scene where they have the submarine in the water, and throughout 90% of the series, they're building up this project or something called the Toy Box. And by the time I'm episode 15, I'm like, shut up about the Toy Box! I don't care! And it's a shame because this series really could have, you know, flowed much more effectively if you focus on the teenagers and the human characters. And they have so many good ones. I mean, the show is filled with hot, sexy-ass women. I mean, we're talking really hot, sexy-ass women. And they're great to look at, great to watch, and funny to watch. And it's just a shame that we've been watching them more closely because the whole robot aspect just kind of barges in and kind of tramples everything. And I've never been one for robots, you know, like I said, but even still... I was able to tolerate them, but I just can't tolerate the jargon that keeps drowning everything out. Review of the characters. 
as I said, there's a really good cast here. You got a lot of funny, interesting characters that are cute, sexy, very interesting to watch, very fun to watch, and above all else, well acted. Chris Patton is perfect as Sosuke Sagara. I mean, some people who play these, you know, stick up the ass, solid stone characters, they kind of slip as they go throughout the series, show some emotional cracks. Chris Patton is not. He actually maintained this through the whole show, and it's actually very impressive. You may think that's kind of bad for you no know, development to show up, but in a way, it's actually very commendable for a voice actor to maintain that, especially since that's all he can control emotion-wise is his voice. Lucy Christensen was phenomenal as Konami Chittery. I've heard her voice so many times that I figured I've heard it in everything and that it sounds the same everywhere. But no, she did a really good job here. I think she really does a much better job at balancing the wider range of emotions with Konami. I mean, there are times where she's very soft and sincere, and she just flips out and get angry. She's not screaming like a banshee through the whole series, even though she does a lot. And it's really impressive to see how she balances that. I always love Alison Keith and Hilary Hag. They're some of my favorite voice actors. Alison Keith played an amusing character here. They didn't really do much with Melissa Mao. I mean, she's funny and sexy and cool to look at, but she was just kind of there and not really doing much. Hilary Hag as Teletha Testarossa is probably the most unusual character because she looks like she's friggin' 14 and she's the head of this military organization, or at least the commander. Either way, it's just kind of weird. It kind of strikes you, you know, head-scratching, wondering, why the hell is a girl this young in control? It just seems kind of weird. And it plays a pretty good role in the show, but still, she was good. I mean, she played an interesting character. Okay, I'd say. Kurtz Weber is funny uh, with Vic McNaghy. I mean, Vic McNaghy is very funny, and he really plays with the whole sleazy charm of this character, and he's a well-welcome sense of humor. Monica Rial is pretty average as uh, Kyoko. She just played a pretty much a best friend character, so she, nothing really noteworthy. Mike McRae was a really good villain voice here. I'm so used to Annie McGavin playing all the villains from ADV, so it was really nice to see a good, more deeper, darker voice to come in with here. Review the animation and the music. Animation is the one thing Full Metal Panic truly has going for it. It's got a beautiful set of visuals that really shines in your eye. You've got some of the most gorgeously drawn women with such vibrant colors. It's fantastic. I mean, this is the kind of animation I think everyone could use because it makes the characters look very realistic and yet still anime cartoonish so that you're not thinking this is a live show. It's beautifully drawn with well crafted colors and visuals. The buildings, the robots, it all looks excellent. The outfits, it's just animated so perfectly that you just swear it's like a living anime painting. The music is pretty good. I kind of like the deep and the darker tones in that. The opening and ending themes are well. You know, this show doesn't rely heavily entirely on music. It's more on the emotional aspect, or at least it should have been. But the music does a nice additional backup. Flaws about the show. As I said, I really couldn't friggin' stand the stupid military jargon crap. I feel it really suffocates the show, and for those of you who like Gundams or mecha animes and enjoy that, I'm sorry, but to me, it's a major buzzkill. And I think people who are looking to this series for something different other than that will be disappointed. Because that was the one thing that I felt throughout this whole series. Disappointed. You've got such rich material with gorgeous women, excellent characters, beautiful animation, and you piss it all away by wasting the one thing you had by letting the worst thing take control. See, the thing is, the best thing this show had going for it was this interaction between the two characters. And not only was it ruined by the military jargon bullshit, but it was loaded with confusing conspiracy crap that really didn't make any sense, nor was it that interesting. And above all else, I got so sick and tired of the fact that when we did see the relation aspects between Konami and Sasuke, it was all about the beating and beating and beating and mockery. I admit this guy is a total stick up the ass, and that's supposed to be the way he is, but there's no development. Development. There's no progress with these characters' relationship. It's like watching Ranma one half. You have to wait 500 episodes just to see the slightest hint of emotional attachment from Akane to Rama. And to me, that's poor character development. If you have to take that long just to show any kind of connection to characters, this isn't development. This is just male bashing or beating. It's not funny. It's not interesting. And above all else, it's not good writing. Final wrap-up. I know a lot of people had their high hopes and high horses wrapped around this anime series, and I can totally see where they're going from with the beautiful animation, excellent characters, and you got some really top-notch voice acting. Chris Patton and Lucy Christensen are phenomenal. I really enjoyed Vic McNagnia, Alison Keith. They're all good, but this show pisses away its best aspect by wasting the relationship characters on such 
trivial and repetitive boring shit as the girlfriend just beating him on the whole series and you drown out with military jargon. The one thing I wanted to be the focal point was in fact the secondary point. And to me, it just wasted everything. I wanted to rate this anime higher, I really wanted to enjoy it, but to be truthful, the only reason I would recommend anyone watching this is so that you have a heads up on the characters and the story for the sequel series, Fumafu and the Second Raid. I've only seen two episodes of each of those series, and each of those four episodes were a thousand times better than the entirety of Full Metal Panic. Bottom line, I give Full Metal Panic two stars out of five stars. Well, that's all for now. This has been Bionic Slime for BS Reviews. Thank you all for listening, and goodbye for now.